Welcome to this demonstration of the declarative JavaScript action chain development in Oracle Visual Builder. My name is Shai Schmelzer. In this demonstration, we're going to show you how you can develop business logic in your Visual Builder application using a declarative approach that is implemented as JavaScript code. You get direct access to the JavaScript code where you can add and modify your code. You can use the browser's developer tools to debug your code and it's very easy to manage your code using Git repositories. Let's see a demo. We're going to define a new event on the salary field to validate the value. So we're going to create an event for the value change, and we're taking it into the action chain editor. Now, the same development approach here is used. We have a bunch of declarative action chains on the left side that we can drag and drop to design our logic. For example, we take a call REST action and we can bind it in a declarative way to a REST endpoint that we have in our system. For example, the REST endpoint that gets us information about department. We need to pass in an input variable. Again, this can be mapped in a declarative way simply by dragging and dropping a value of one variable onto the endpoint. We can also store the result in a variable of our choosing we're going to create a new name for this variable over here. Similarly, you can take a logic components like an if-else statement and just add it over here to define what's going to happen after you call a REST endpoint. Now, while I was working in a declarative way, if you switch to the code view, you would see that we're actually creating actual JavaScript code while working in the declarative way. We have a function with a specific name. We can change the name of the function to something more meaningful, for example, the salary validator. And when we do this, we reload the function, we see the declarative view, but again, let's switch back to the code view. And now we have the new name here. In this function, we have a main run section that accepts parameters. For example, we pass in the value of the field over here, and you can add additional parameters to this section chain as needed. We have access to the page, flow, and application scopes and the variables in them. And then we basically call our declarative actions, for example, the call rest, passing in values of parameters. Here, the if l statement that we added is also in here. It's simply JavaScript code. So we can go back to the uh, declarative view and continue to manage and modify it here. One of the nice things that we can do here, again, is define, for example, our if then else in a declarative way using the expression value. We want to check the maximum salary that is allowed in a specific department. So from the department info, we'll get this info and we're going to compare it to the actual salary that we are setting for an employee. So we'll pick this employee salary field. And this is our condition here. One of the powerful capabilities of JavaScript function is the ability to create local functions. To do that, you're going to take um, existing actions, and when you drag them into the visual editor, you'll see on the bottom right an area called create function. So for example, if we take the fire notification action and drop it over here, we can create a reusable local method, um, for example, to report invalid values. Okay, so we'll call this one the invalid notification. We can add parameters to this local function. For example, error message can be an input variable, and we can even define a return type if we want to. Then just like in every other place, you can use the declarative actions, for example, to fire up a notification of invalid value. Now that this uh, local function is defined, we can use it in our external function. It's going to appear here in our list of function, and we can drag it, for example, into the else case for our if. Okay. So beyond that, you can also add calls to pure JavaScript code. So just take this and bring a JavaScript call over here. If you switch to the code view, you'll be able to code your JavaScript, including the ability to use things like code insights, structure, helpers, and things like that. So for example, over here, we created a while loop very easily. Um, we can use, for example, a console log to report an error as another step in our uh, validation process over here. 
when you look at it in the declarative view, you're going to see a JS function over here, and you can move it around. It's basically just moving your JS code in the code editor. On the left side, by the way, you also have a structure pane that helps you locate and understand the structure of your code. Clicking on it would navigate you to the specific area. You can also collapse areas in your code uh, declarative view uh, for easier access. All right, so before we actually run our page, one more thing that we need to do is actually pass the error message that we want to display here. So, for example, we can write uh, an invalid salary as the error message. Now we're ready to run our application. This would pop up in a new window, and we can see if our application works correctly. We're going to select an employee from the left, and we're getting an error message over here saying invalid value, invalid salary. So we know this comes from our code, but we weren't expecting this. So one of the nice things with JavaScript Action Chain is that you can use the developer tools in your browser to debug them. Simply access the source under the sources tab. You can navigate to your function, which would be under your page. Um, just with the name that you specified for it, the salary validator here, you can see your JavaScript code and you can actually set a breakpoint in any point and use all the debugging tools that are available in your browser to help you debug your code. So for example, if we now change the salary again and leave the field, we're going to hit our validator, stop at the breakpoint, we can see the maximum salary and we can see the salary and evaluate what's going on here. Um, and we can see by inspecting it that our operator is actually defining the reverse way than what we should have have it. Okay, so let's go back to our code and fix this. So we'll go to our if statement and we'll just reverse the operator here to check that the maximum salary is actually bigger than the actual salary that the employee gets. All right, so now let's reload our page. We'll select another employee on the left side. We're going to hit our breakpoint because we are checking that it's a valid value, but this time the value is going to be correctly reported as valid and therefore we're not going to see any error message. Continuing to check, we can set a value that is outside of the salary range. Again, when we leave the field, we hit the breakpoint. You can remove this breakpoint if you don't need it anymore. And indeed, we get the invalid value notification over here. So this was a quick introduction to JavaScript action chains in Visual Builder. As you can see, it's very easy to develop them in a declarative way while keeping the full power of the ability to go into a code view and modify JavaScript directly or code directly in JavaScript, use the browser development tools to debug your application code, and even manage it using Git in an easy way, easier merges than before.